Practice is in the thing you do once you are good. It's the thing you do that makes you good. A very warm good morning to all my dear students. Let us recall our previous session. We learned about population growth. We also learned about population structure wherein under population structure we discussed about age structure, labor force participation rate, literacy rate, sex ratio and dependency ratio. We also discussed about the qualitative factors that improve the labor potential and the advantages in developing human resource. Let us now begin our 11th session. We already learned in our previous session that there are two qualitative aspects of human resource. Which are they? They are education and health care. Let us now study how education improves human resource. Education in every sense is one of the fundamental factors of development. A mere increase in the population will not lead to the development of a country. It requires people with potential and skills. Education has a major role in molding skilled people. In India, we have a Ministry of Human Resource Development, a department. The main responsibility of this department is to plan and implement the activities necessary for human resource development. Now, let us study how education helps in the development of a country. Starting with education. Education means a form of learning in which knowledge, skills and habits are transferred from one generation to the other generation. Education is a powerful agent of change and improves health and livelihood, contributes to social stability and drives long-term economic growth. Education helps in improving the skills of individuals both technically and mentally. And more and more skillful people will help in the development of a country leading to better performance and productivity. Education helps in improving the technological knowledge of an individual which helps him to secure a better and meaningful life. We should keep in mind that education does not only mean a formal education but also skillful development. Education helps to secure better jobs and there increase the income of the individuals leading to the increase in per capita income and finally leading to economic growth of a nation. Education improves the standard of living of an individual. Education enriches the people's understanding of themselves and the world. It improves the quality of their lives and leads to broad social benefits to the individuals as well as the society. Thus, education plays a very crucial role in securing economic and social progress and improving their income distribution. So, how does education help in the development of a country? Prepare a flowchart. So, education improves the skills of individuals. Education betters the technological know-how. Education helps to secure better job and income. And finally, education improves the standard of living of an individual. So once again, education improves the skills of individuals. It leads to bettering the technological know-how. Helps to secure better job and income. And finally, education helps to improve the standard of living of an individual. Children. Let us now move on to literacy rate. So before that, let me ask you, who is a literate person? An individual who has an ability to read and write is called a literate person. Literacy is a basic skill or knowledge of a subject. Literacy rate is the percentage of population that can read and write with comprehension. Now what do you mean by comprehension? Comprehension here means activating knowledge by questioning, analyzing, 
visualizing and summarizing. So what is literacy rate? Literacy rate is the percentage of population that can read and write with comprehension. Literacy is crucial to economic development as well as an individual and community's well-being. Our economy is enhanced when learners have higher literacy levels. Literacy in India is a key for socio-economic progress. It is one of the most essential indicators of the quality of a country's human capital. Literacy helps in women empowerment, eradicates poverty and starvation to some extent. So what is literacy rate? Literacy rate refers to the percentage of population that can read and write with comprehension. Children, you can see a table here showing the literacy rate in India according to the 2011 population census. Here, the female literacy is 65.46 percentage. Male literacy is 82.14 percent. Out of the total population, only 74.04 percent are literate. Now children, why do you think the literacy rate in India could not be improved along the expected lines? We know that education has a major role in molding skilled people. Experts claim that at least 6% of the national income must be spent for providing facilities in Indian education sector. According to 2017 and 18 financial year, only 3.7% of the gross domestic product was spent by the government of India on education. Children, I hope you remember the term gross domestic product or GDP which we studied last year. So what is GDP? GDP or gross domestic product is the total value of goods and services produced in a country. GDP growth rate is an essential indicator of the country's economic development and progress. Thus, literacy rate could not be improved along the expected lines. So, why in India the literacy rate could not be improved along the expected lines? Experts argue that at least 6% of the national income must be spent for providing facilities in the education sector. During the year 2017 and 18, Government of India spent only 3.7% of the gross domestic product, that is GDP, on education. Hence, the literacy rate could not be improved along the expected lines. In order to develop education and skills, Indian government has implemented various projects. So here the question is, prepare a table on the projects implemented in India to develop education and skills. So let us move on to our first project. The name of the first project is Integrated Child Development Scheme or also known as ICDS. The main aim of ICDS scheme is to provide food, preschool education, primary health care, immunization, health checkups and referral services to children up to 6 years of age and their mothers. ICDS also provides health care for pregnant and lactating mothers, meaning feeding milk to their newborns. Moving on to our second scheme, which is Samagra Shiksha Abhyan, or also known as SSA. It is an integrated scheme for school education extending from preschool to higher secondary level to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education at all levels of school education. It also promotes vocational education which means technical knowledge. Moving on to our third project that is Samagra Shiksha Abhyan was formed by integrating SSA which is Sarva Shiksha Abhyan and RMSA which is 
राष्ट्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा अभियान द एम ऑफ दिस स्कीम इज टू प्रोवाइड ट्रेनिंग टू टीचर्स थ्रू इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइक एस सी ई आर टी दैट इज स्टेट काउंसिल ऑफ एजुकेशनल रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग एंड डायट दैट इज डिस्ट्रिक्ट इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेनिंग इट ऑल्सो एनश्योर्स quality and equity in education and improves educational facilities moving on to rashtriya uchchal shiksha abhiyan that is r u s a it is a centrally sponsored scheme which aims at providing strategic funding to eligible state higher educational institutions it helps in improving the quality of higher education in the country and finally national skill development and monetary reward scheme this scheme was launched in the year 2013 for promotional purposes to motivate the youth of india by improving their working skills and ensure the availability of people with employable skills which are the educational development programs started by the state and local government institutions in kerala firstly providing mid day meal to the students mid day meals are provided by the government schools to the students it is a scheme for school students designed to improve the nutritional status of the school then various schemes are implemented for sc and st students such as granting of scholarships etc government of kerala has improved schemes or projects for providing drinking or potable water government has provided facilities such as toilets pure drinking water playgrounds for improving physical health medical checkups etc in schools government provides opportunities to women for empowerment in various fields which includes education as well as the professional sector transportation facilities are provided by the government for the easy mobility the different educational development programs undertaken by the state and local government institutions in kerala which are they providing mid day meal to the students implementing programs for improving the quality of education various projects are implemented for sc and st students improved projects on availability of drinking water various programs implemented to develop infrastructure facilities in school women's education is given prior importance and finally proper arrangement for better transportation facilities now let us move on to or discuss the problems that exist in the education sector which needs to be solved certain sections drop out from schools without completing primary education poverty availability and accessibility are three big reasons why children drop out from schools many children leave the schools because of the inability to deal with the academic pressure child marriage and child labor are also the reasons for the drop out from schools second one there is a lack of availability of basic facilities in the education sector educational facilities play a crucial role in strengthening and improving the quality of education high quality infrastructure facilities better instructions improves student outcomes and reduces dropouts spacious classrooms with good furniture blackboards electrical fittings like lights and fans clean and hygienic toilets accessible drinking water activity and play areas laboratories with good instruments and equipments computers for students to learn and experiment with should be provided and finally 
quality of education should be improved. Knowledge, skills and expertise are the key enablers for maintaining our economic growth. Education programs focuses on bettering student achievements. So, what are the problems that still exist in the education sector of India which needs to be solved? First one, certain sections drop out from schools without completing primary education. Second one, there is a lack of availability of basic facilities in the education sector. And finally, quality of education has to be improved. Which are the various institutions that provide educational facilities in India? Many schools, colleges, universities, technical education institutions provide education to different sections of people in our country. A fundamental right was passed in the year 2009 as the Right to Education Act, wherein a free and compulsory education for all children between 6 and 14 years of age has been made part of the fundamental rights. So, institutions at various levels to provide educational facilities in India. They are schools, colleges, universities, technical education institutions, etc. are among them. Our country has made education a fundamental right and has passed the Right to Education Act that is RTE Act in the year 2009. The constitution ensures the goal of elementary education for all through Right to Education Act. Moving on to our second qualitative aspect of human resource which is healthcare. So let us see how healthcare improves human resource. Firstly, let me ask you the meaning of health. What is health? The word health refers to a state of complete emotional and physical well-being. Mental and physical health are probably the two most frequently discussed types of health. Healthcare exists to help people maintain this optimal state of health. The constitution of the World Health Organization that is the WHO which came into force on 7th of April 1948 defined health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. Along with physical well-being or physical conditions, importance is given to mental as well as social conditions. It is the government's responsibility to ensure health care for all. Only then, each individual work for the economic development of a country. So, what is health according to the World Health Organization or WHO? According to the World Health Organization, that is WHO, health is a state of physical, mental and social well-being. Now, let us see how healthy persons can participate in the progress of a country. First one, production increases with the increase in efficiency and the number of working days. Efficiency of the workers with increased number of working days leads to increase in production which leads to the progress of our country. Second one, Natural resources can be utilized properly. Proper utilization of natural resources will help in increasing the production and leading to the economic growth and development of a nation. Thirdly, medical expense can be reduced, thereby reducing the government's expenditure. If people are healthy, the medical expenses will be reduced and thus reducing the expenditure of the government leading to the progress of a nation. Fourthly, economic development is possible through the increase in production. A country can develop economically only if the production increases. When the efficiency of the workers increase, 
due to proper health care and education it leads to the increase in production which in turn leads to the progress of a nation list the facilities to be ensured for health care first one availability of nutritious food a balanced diet with nutritional values should be made available for maintaining the health of the people second one availability of clean water many people do not get clean portable water thus government should provide better facilities like tanker facilities tube wells etc for solving the problem of drinking water among common people third one preventive measures measures like vaccinations providing clean environment hygienic toilets preventing the spread of contagious diseases discourage people from smoking drinking alcohol and usage of intoxicants fourthly cleanliness keeping the environment and surrounding clean is necessary for improving the health of people awareness programs should be given to the people to make them realize the importance of cleanliness and hygiene fifthly medical facilities various medical facilities like health centers at different levels doctors medicines ambulance services easy availability of medicines should be made available to the people to ensure good health health camps should be started at different places to ensure good health moving on to the sixth point ensuring of leisure and entertainment participation in leisure activities is associated with various components of successful aging including physical health and well being cinema halls community centers etc provide en en uh, entertainment that helps in improving the mental health of the people and finally healthy environment a green environment gives oxygen which makes air purified gyms and exercise centers help in keeping the people healthy good diet proper working conditions better environment for the students will help in healthy environment that ensures health care institutions that work at different levels in the medical sector they are medical colleges district hospitals community health centers now community health centers are a network of clinics staffed by a group of general practitioners and nurses providing health care services to people in a certain area then you have primary health care center two as public health centers are state owned rural health care facilities in india they are essentially single physician clinic usually with facilities for minor surgeries and lastly health sub centers health sub centers are the first contact point between the primary health care system and the community health care system a health sub center provides all the primary health care services to the people at the grassroots level so which are the various institutions that operate to ensure the availability of health care facilities firstly medical colleges district hospitals community health centers primary health centers and finally health sub centers explain in detail the services of various institutions working in the health care there are various hospitals working in the cooperative and private sectors modern hospitals such as multi specialty hospitals provides modern and latest treatment facilities with modern equipments laboratories research centers etc many institutions provide different systems of medicines like ayurveda yoga naturopathy now what is naturopathy 
It means a system of alternative medicine based on the theory that diseases can be successfully treated or prevented without the use of drugs by the techniques such as control of diet, exercise and massaging. Then you have Yunani. Yunani is a system of medicine practiced in many parts of India using aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is usage of fragrant essential oils and also along with massaging. Siddha medicine. Now what is Siddha medicine? Siddha medicine is a traditional system of healing that originated in South India based on a combination of ancient medicinal practices and spiritual disciplines. And finally, homeopathy. Then, National Rural Health Mission, that is NRHM, functions to make quality health services to all. It operates in the rural sector. And finally, National Urban Health Mission, that is NUHM. Now, NUHM functions to make available quality health services to all. It provides health services to the residents of urban slums and other marginalized people in towns with a population of more than 50,000. So, explain in detail the services of various institutions working in the healthcare. Firstly, there are various hospitals in the cooperative and private sectors. Many multi-speciality hospitals operate to make available modern treatment facilities. There are several institutions which provide different systems of medicines like Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. National Rural Health Mission that is NRHM and National Urban Health Mission which is NUHM function to make available quality health services to all. The NRHM that is the National Rural Health Mission operates in the rural sector. The National Urban Health Mission provides improved health services to the residents of urban slums and other marginalized people in towns with a population of more than 50,000. Now, let us see the problems that exist in the healthcare sector. First one, lack of nutritious food. Many people do not avail enough of proteins, carbohydrates, fats and minerals from the food that they eat. Second one, lack of better treatment facilities. Many people live in such remote places where they do not avail even the basic primary health care treatments. Then, less opportunity for the poor to get medical care. Poor people do not have enough income to go for better medical treatments. High medical expenses. Various treatments that require scanning, operations and long term treatments are very expensive and many people in our country cannot afford such facilities. Insufficient pure water supply. Many people do not have facilities for pure drinking water and they are forced to survive on contaminated water which results in poor health. And finally, unhealthy environment. Accumulation of dirt due to lack of disposal system leads to a very unhealthy and unhygienic environment which leads to chronic diseases. So once again, list the existing problems in the health sector. They are lack of nutritious food, lack of better treatment facilities, less opportunity for the poor to get medical care, high medical expenses, insufficient pure water supply and finally unhealthy environment. Now 
let us study or discuss about life expectancy life expectancy refers to the number of years a person can expect to live life expectancy is based on an estimate of the average age that the members of a particular population group will be when they die the life expectancy for a particular person or population group depends on several variables such as their lifestyle access to health care diet economical status and the relevant mortality rate however as life expectancy is calculated based on averages a person may live for many years more or less than expected so what is life expectancy life expectancy is the expected average years of life of a person's person lives so what is life expectancy it is the expected average years of life of a person lives children look at the table showing the life expectancy in india according to the to the 2011 population census here the female life expectancy in india is 67.7% whereas male life expectancy rate is 64.6% and average life expectancy is 66.1% according to the 2011 population census Do you agree with the statement that the main reason for prosperity and poverty in the world is the difference in human resource development? Prepare a note. Yeah, resources are very important for the economic development of a country. They should be used properly to achieve development. Human resource is equally important as natural resources. When both of them, that is the human resource and natural resources are combined it leads to an increase in production which in turn leads to the economic development good efforts are needed in both the education as well as the health sectors to develop human resources which finally leads to the quality and development of human resource so various resources are to be used properly for the economic development of a country human resource is as important as natural resources when the natural resources are combined with human efforts there is an increase in production leading to economic development therefore planned efforts are required in the education and health sectors to develop human resource only then can the quality and development of human resources be attained now let's move on to our assessment area answer these questions in your notebook question 1 explain how a healthy person can participate in the progress of a nation i repeat explain how a healthy person can participate in the progress of a nation question 2 write a note on the role of education and health care in human resource development once again write a note on the role of education and health care in human resource development this ends our 11th session here i hope i was clear to you in my session stay home stay safe